Have you ever been in an accident? Did you walk away lucky to have your life? Your same face? Well, not everyone is that fortunate, and what you're about to see is nothing shy of a miracle. Dr. William J. Binder is largely responsible for creating 3D computer imaging and CAD CAM technology for the design and manufacturing of custom implants. These implants are used for the reconstruction of post-traumatic, congenital, and aesthetic facial contour deficiencies. I was on my way to work one day, a passenger in a, a vehicle, and I was in a severe auto accident, high-speed auto collision. And though I was wearing a safety belt, I still uh, hit the dash of the car, took a blow across the mid-face, and uh, sustained extremely severe injuries. Um, 30 facial fractures, blow-up fractures of both eye orbits, lateral wall fractures. Um, uh, basically, the center part of my face was, uh, was cut loose, and um, the center part of my forehead was collapsed. The central sinus was badly fractured. This patient was in an automobile accident, and after about a year and a half, she was left with this type of deformity. And if you can see it, this area in here of the lower, here is the eye, and these are the nasal bones, and this is the front portion of the face. This area in here is totally depressed and is lacking bone because she lost the bone from the automobile accident. This part of her nose, if you can see this, is pushed all the way back. So all of the bones of the mid-third of the face on the right side of her face is pushed backward. Um, she also has a, a defect in here causing a, a depressed area over the forehead. So what we did was actually make from this uh, model of that particular patient an implant that fits perfectly in order to reconstruct not only the defect, but also we've been able to compensate for that backward displacement of the, of the bones of the nose and of the mid portion of the face. Before the surgery, my face was um, uh, uncomfortable. And I'm not talking about pain. Have you ever seen the Sunday papers where the uh, color in the comics is right outside the lines and uh, you know, the, the, the coloring's a little off? That's the way my face felt. My eyelid pulled a little bit this way. When I smiled, I always felt like I was frowning because of the way my forehead was caved in. And after the implant surgery, everything moved correctly again. All the muscles moved correctly, and when I blinked, it felt right, and when I smiled, it felt right, and I didn't feel like I was frowning all the time because of the way the muscles were being pulled. And for the first time, it felt like my face was right again. Computer technology now um, started out as just obtaining a CT scan, which is two-dimensional image. Uh, that image was then through a very specialized commercial entity was uh, pioneered in the early 80s to be reformatted into a three-dimensional image. Now, actually, the new generation CT scanners can actually do all of that work for you and produce three-dimensional images for you. Okay? From there, however, the big and crucial step is transferring that information into an actual physical model of that patient's facial skeleton. And we can do that to about 99 percentile. We can get that close. So that we can see that actual individual model, have it in our hands, look at it, look at what's wrong with it. And we can see it in infinite relationships that you can never appreciate on just a two-dimensional x-ray. Uh, what happened to me back on July 9th, 1984, I was uh, going for a daily a ski run. I, I, ski, I used to ski very often. I used to go to the Colorado River once a week and I happened to go with a friend who's never skied before to Lake Elsinore in Riverside uh, County. And uh, I trained him how to operate the boat and he pulled me water skiing for a long period of time. And what happened to me was uh, I I ended up uh, hurting my back a little bit because I was in such pain for skiing for such a long time that I actually held up the ski to be picked up and instead of encircling me like a professional is supposed to, he came right towards me. And instead of uh, uh, slowing down, uh, he, he coasted towards me and my wife who was in the boat, she says, Efren, this is the wrong way to do it. Uh, what you should do is 
put it in neutral and turn off the key. And instead of pulling it back into neutral, what he did was he pushed the throttle in the opposite direction. He pushed into full throttle. The boat then went over me and the propeller of the boat hit me in the head. The injuries that I uh, received were uh, to my facial cranial area of my forehead. And it had my skull open uh, probably about a half an inch all the way from my middle forehead all the way down to my ear or the temple area. Also, uh, my other scar, which is right here, cut into my uh, upper palate and broke it into pieces. And it was carried into the ho hospital outside of you know my body. And when I was in the hospital, uh, I didn't even realize that, that I was in the accident until after I'd awakened, which was another day later. And what I wanted to do was see myself in the mirror. And what was really sad about it is the physician wouldn't even let me look at myself. Finally, I was able to, to get up. I had two, two poles, and I was able to walk over to the mirror. And when I looked at myself, I thought I was the most grotesque person on earth. It was just really sad for me. I had a really hard time handling it. Matter of fact, I thought death was better than living in the way I was. I, you know, I was so deformed, I didn't think there was any way of healing me in a way that would look normal or as close to regular as possible. Earl was uh, an extremely difficult uh, uh, case to do. Um, he had both soft tissue loss and bone loss uh, due to the injury sustained from the uh, boat propeller. Uh, obviously, the injury was severe. Uh, the, once the bone flap was replaced permanently, it left a, a massive defect extending from the forehead in here up into this area of the skull. So what we did was use the a 3D AccuScan method of reconstruction. And what it is is we take a uh, CAT scan or a CT scan through that particular area that is involved. We then take that information, which is a computer digital information, and convert it into a three-dimensional image in the computer screen. And from there, we mill out a, a polystyrene model of the patient's facial skeleton, an actual 3D model. From there, we are able to make a custom implant to fit that defect precisely to that defect and to that patient. So you have a perfect fit and a perfect contour. Uh, the way I looked as I had left from the hospital, the, my face wasn't straight. My nose was off to the side. My mouth was off to the other side. My eyes were sunken in, into the inside of my head. Um, the scars, of course, were very noticeable. And uh, it was just a hard thing to accept. But as I was leaving the hospital, uh, the hardest thing that affected me, matter of fact, it hits me really hard right now, is uh, my wife brought the kids up to see me. And both of them said, Mom, that's not my dad. My mid face is actually dented in, and my lower jaw is elongated a lot more. If you look at my profile, it will be look like a moon face. And that my specific need was to correct my mid face to bring out my mid face as much as the normal profile. I would have to have two things happen to me. I would have to have an oral surgeon work with an orthodontist. The orthodontist will move all my teeth in a future position. And so that when the surgery is done, they can put in the teeth in the future position to, to fix the jawbone. That meaning they have to actually cut my middle face, move the jaw, and there's a lot of complication with it, which would include the, the, nerve, the death of the nerve, and they might even include a lot of root canal, okay? I might have a lot more bone loss, and I need a lot of prosthetic work. So my alternative is a disaster. My alternative, we're talking about probably six months of the recovering time and three years of working time with doctors. I saw Mary Sue in consultation the first time, and we talked about doing something for her mid-facial deformity. Uh, we knew it was a congenital deformity, and I started to explain to her what the possibilities were in terms of reconstructive surgery, what could we use to uh, implement something that would make her appearance 
a little bit better. In this case, the 3D imaging modeling process was the only way we can possibly go in order to reconstruct that area and, and, even, and get this type of result. What you had was a retruded or backwardly displaced area of bone in the midface. Uh, to put uh, anything over this area uh, that is uh, abruptly changing in, in surface variations uh, is very difficult unless that implant fits perfectly. Using the 3D process, we were able to obtain the model, make the implant fit it onto the model perfectly so that it, it, once it's in place, it doesn't move. No movement of an implant means success. This procedure, uh, for me, has, has been an answer to uh, a, really almost a lifelong problem that I had since when I was 13 years old. I started getting these uh, things around my eyes, which were very unattractive. I sought, I sought uh, my first um, plastic surgeon when I was 25, and he did just an eye lift, and it just didn't help. I was an actress, and... When I was, when they would do close-ups of me, um, the the cameraman would say, "What's underneath her eyes?" And that was when I was extremely young, and it really made me paranoid, and it made me so aware of uh, a fault in my face that um, I've spent 20 years trying to get it corrected. There was a lot of re a lot of things wrong around my eyes. There was indentations here, which just no matter how much makeup you put on, it just didn't help. Um, dark circles. Um, one, this this eye was different than the my right eye was different than my left. Brooke Jacks um, is probably one of the, um, the the triumphs of of um, my career. It's it's um, it's one of those cases where you don't think you're going to get to first base and you hit a home run. Uh, she had several procedures that left the eyelid skin in such a, a poor state where you had just basically skin around the eyelids with no soft tissue, subcutaneous tissue, fat, or dermis under it. So it was just one little wrinkled piece of tissue paper that was uh, placed over the uh, orbital structure, which is right in this region, and at its juncture with the thicker cheek skin produced a, a really hideous deformity. The preoperative pictures that you see are pictures after about five failed attempts at reconstructing the deformity. She had a dermal fat graft and multiple fat injections and temporalis fascial grafts put in, all of which resorb. The point of that is, is that we don't yet, in this state of the art in surgery, have a soft tissue substitute in bulk form whether it be from the patient's own tissues or not, that will last. It will not stand the test of time. It will resorb and eventually dissipate and go away. And she's living testimony to that fact. The problem was, is how do you reconstruct this? If we can't replace lost soft tissue, how are we going to make that area better? Well, what we did was an end around. What we did was we knew we, knew we weren't going to try to go down that same road again what we thought was is if we can change the structure, the skeletal structure, underneath the skin, where the skin was draping. So if the skin is draping like this, if we can change it so that the skin drapes like this, maybe, and I said to her, maybe we can get a 50% improvement. As it turned out, what we did was we restructured the entire orbit to build up the platform upon which the skin rests so that we wouldn't see so much of that deformity so that the skin would lie better so it would sort of expand the skin to some degree and we hit a home run. We, we got about 85 percent improvement on her. I was able to feel the way I did before the accident and it felt like the jigsaw puzzle pieces of my face that had been fractured and, and knocked loose had been all put into place again and my life was the way it should be again and um, it was more than cosmetic surgery it was it was life restoring surgery and I um, I can never thank him enough for what he's done in terms of what it does for me in the future it just makes me feel greater every day and we only live once I now look as good as I feel
Dr. William J. Binder, the pioneer of the 3D modeling process, is on the clinical faculty at UCLA School of Medicine and attending surgeon at Cedar sinai Medical Center. For nearly two decades, Dr. Binder has maintained a successful practice in the field of facial plastic and reconstructive surgery in Los Angeles, California.